Hi guys, today we're talking about the basics of animations in JavaFX. We're going to have a very simple animation and um, we'll talk about theory and then the implementation of it. Plus we'll, might, uh, we might introduce some um, interpolators to our animations. So the example that we're going to try and create is this Windows 10 thing. So in Windows 10, if you've used it, in the bottom right corner, there's a notification bar or button. When you click on it, this thing appears from the right side of the screen. And that's what we're going to try and create. Uh, right, so first things first. Let's go with six um, eight hundred by six hundred, and let's also add the launch. Okay, um, so this will give us the thing. Yeah, we got the window. Now what we want to do is create our notification pane. Um, Just going to be a generic um, node, the extends parent. We might want to give it uh, width and height. And um, background potentially which is going to be a rectangle. With height and color. Um, that color is dark gray, I think, with a bit of transparency going on. So let's go with, um, actually, if we make it slightly darker, maybe 0 0.75, how about that? And yeah, that's it. Let's just add this thing now to our um, notification pane. With 200 and height 600, I'm going to translate the X to 800 minus 200. So this all place perfectly to the right hand side and let's add this. Okay, um, that's probably because I haven't added the children, um, this background to the list of children. There we go, so this is our notification pane something like this and you can add some stuff to it because it extends parent which means you can just populate uh, it with other things for now i want to have a button that will control the animation obviously you can call it something um, you can call the animations from different places but to start and stop the animation i'm going to use that button um, animate Set an action, do something. So this will create a button in the top left corner because by default it's zero, zero. And when I'm going to press that button, I want the animation to go away. Well, to the notification pane to go to the right of the window, which means you won't be able to see it. And then pop back again. 
and let's go with just plain animate, which means we can offload the implementation to peer. Right, so a bit of theory for you. Uh, animation is essentially a change of value over time. So if you're going to change something over time, you get back an animation. If you change the Let's run this. It's going to run, right? Yeah. So if you change, um, let's look at that button, for example. It has an X and Y position in, in the two dimensional space. If you change the X value over time, what you get is an animation of movement along the X axis. If you do the same for the Y, you will get the animation for the Y axis. If you change both at the same time, you basically create a movement animation and what is in JavaFX called translate transition. Translate means move. So you can translate things over time and essentially get an animation doing that. Say I want to move this button from here to there, and let's say the distance is 120 pixels. If you do it in one go, if you change the value of that button to plus 120 pixels, you'll get an instantaneous movement, which is not what you want. You want an animation, change of value over time. And to do that, instead of moving this instantaneously, you would change the value, the X and Y values, um, over some period of time, like say one second. In one second, there are 60 frames, because that's how the JavaFX pulse works. It's, um, it's fixed to 60 frames per second, which means that every second there will be 60 frames so you want to have 120 pixels change per 60 frames to calculate how many pixels you need per frame you just divide 120 by 60 and you get two pixels per frame so by doing that you're going to very smoothly animate the button movement from where it is now to plus 120 pixels and that's what's called the linear um, transition, where you have exact, the exact same rate of change, which is two pixels per frame, every frame. If it was a variable change, then you would end up with some kind of different um, transition, not linear anymore, because it's different. So you may have um, exponential, quadratic, cubic, etc. And we'll look at those things, um, which are called interpolators, once we've created our basic animation, which is going to be linear, for starters. So that was the theory bit. Uh, now let's get to the implementation. So translate transition. We're going to translate uh, for one second this notification pane, so this object. And let's add some things. So we want to, we're calling this animate function in, when we press the button. So if it is already animating, we don't want it to animate anymore. So it is animating by default, it's false. So if animating, just return from that method. What else? Uh, when the animation is finished, we want is animating to become false. And when we play, we want the animation to become is animating to become true. And translate transition. Well, it translates, it moves from one position to another over some period of time, which we specified as one second. And there are two things it needs to know about um, where we are starting the animation and where we're going with that animation. So essentially two points. Well, the starting point, well, essentially it's not just two points because we're moving only in the X axis. If you look at this Windows thing again, it only moves in the x-axis, right? It doesn't move along the y-axis. 
So the only thing we need to change is from X, which is where we are at the moment, and to X, which is where we're going to be. If we're starting as in an open position, then it's get translate plus 200. I think 200 is the length of that thing. Well, it's a width anyway, so we can use W. And if it's in the open thing, in, if it's open, you might want to introduce an enum at this point, um, saying open, closed, or just boolean. Uh, I'm going to judge that based on where we are. So if get translate is less than 800, which is the scene width, which I'm not going to pass, I'll just hard code it. So if it's less than that, we're going to move to the right. If it's not, then we're in the closed position and we want to move to the left. So the 2x becomes get translate minus w. I think that works. And then we play. Let's see. Yeah, so it will move right and, and this thing will move left. I'm not sure why it lags, but it shouldn't because I'm recording at 60 frames per second. And the whole thing is running 60 frames per second, so it should be fine. Right, uh, so that's what you have for one second. It's linear. Every frame it moves the exact um, same amount of pixels. So that's your basic animation. And what we can do now um, is create something a bit more complex. Because, you know, um, straightforward animation, pretty much everyone can do it. So how do you make your animation stand out? Well, this is where, well, the answer is in theory, again. And this is where interpolators come in. Here, you can see that this transition and other animations in JavaFX take interpolators as parameters. And interpolator is essentially a function that takes a value between 0 and 1 and returns a value between 0 and 1. The value that it takes is the progress of the animation. Uh, and obviously, it's between 0 and 1, you can, because you can only go up to 100%. And so the value between 0 and 1 translates to percentage of the progress of the animation. So at 50%, you've just completed half of the animation. And the value it returns is the rate at which you're going to um, change your, say, movement in this case. Uh, for scaling, it would be how quickly you're going to scale up or down. And similarly with rotation. But for now, if we want to move from the linear um, transition to something different, say exponential, and I already have all these interpolators implemented in FXGL, so if you want to have a look at those, feel free to do so. And these are also called um, easing functions. You can see where I got the, uh, most of the functions from and uh, adapted to be usable in FXGL. But if you want to create an app, you don't want to have a dependency on the game engine, on, on the FXGL game engine. So you might want to introduce interpolators in your own app as well. I'm going to find exponential, which is that. I'm going to use this. So a new interpolator, we just override one function, which is that, as I said, it takes a value between 0 and 1, it returns a value between 0 and 1. If t is 1, then we turn 1. Else, we return that thing. And now see what happens. So it starts very um, starts very quickly, the animation, and then it um, slows down as it reaches the end of the animation. 
And you can also swap this to be the other way around. So it'll start slowly, but towards the end, it will speed up. And there are various cool things you can do with this, because literally it's just this interpolator thing that you're changing. The rest of the things, um, well, they remain the same. So you can have bounce, um, interpolation, elastic, and just try them all out. Um, it's really fun to watch various animations, but I prefer the ease out on um, uh, exponential interpolator, which is used in um, various situations, I think, because I've seen that before, definitely. Right, so that is pretty much it. Um, these are the basics of animations. Uh, an animation is a value change over time. Interpolator is variable change over time, or rather the change rate change over time, because you're changing how the value changes. And yeah, so essentially what you want to do now is take this class, um, make sure it's reusable by say fixing the width and height and binding them to um, potentially the scene width and height, because if I do this, then everything breaks pretty much, right? So you want to base the width and the height of this um, object on the scene width and height. And then you might want to introduce something like a notification service in your app. So whenever something happens, it calls that service as a notification, which in turn calls this pane to pop up. And essentially what you've got is an emulation of this Windows 10 thingy. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Don't forget to vote on the content of the next video and thanks for watching.